My name is Alexandra Elbakan. I am the creator of the site SciHub, a project allowing scientists, students and researchers to get access to scientific literature. This is actually a wonderful project. Our community is very familiar with it. Thank you for taking the time to talk with us. Rather than discussing legal issues, let's talk instead about the essence of this project, why it was initiated, and why such a need, namely to open public access to scientific publications, arose, and what was the motivation for you personally. Well, here is how it all began. In general, I faced the problem of closed scientific articles a very, very long time ago, back when I was at university. I was doing a project, one might even say it was an innovative one. In many of the mobile phones, we now have the option to identify the user by fingerprint, and some systems even use retinal scans. I had an idea to use electrical potentials, which can be collected from the surface of the head, potentials that our brain generates. It's like authentication using the power of thought. Imagine if you could use a thought instead of a password. Sounds really interesting. Yes, this is what my thesis was about, and I was looking for literature. At the time, there were nearly 70 scientific articles published on this topic, and almost all of them were behind paywalls. As a consequence, they were not available to me, and I had to find out how to bypass these paywall mechanisms. For several years, I had to travel and work abroad on different projects, and when I returned, I found a Russian forum of molecular biologists where people were helping each other gain access to specific scientific publications. If someone didn't have some publication available, they would post a request on this forum, and other users would send them the article. In fact, it's very interesting. It was somewhat like a game. I remember that I was monitoring this site, and as soon as a request appeared, I was trying to fulfill it. For some reason, a person gets somewhat addicted to this activity, like on social networks, I guess. Later on, as I worked as a web developer, I gained practical experience on how such services functioned. And there was another event that prompted me. When I was living in Kazakhstan, I was born and grew up in Kazakhstan, our access to the Leaf Journal website was blocked. I wanted to read the article there, and at first I used special services known as anonymizers to get to Leaf Journal through a proxy. It was then that I thought, why not provide the same or similar service, but for scientific articles? So, I came up with this idea, and there was a burning desire to test it. The creation of the alpha version took me a couple of days. Then I posted this idea on the forum, and people approved it. In short, the idea worked. The project immediately gained huge popularity. So, this is how things in general started to progress. You see, I didn't really feel irritated by this issue with unavailable publications, nothing like that. I just had the desire to test my idea to see if it would work, and also, when you help people to gain access to a scientific article and they thank you, it gives you a nice feeling. I see. Yes, it sounds interesting. Let's move on to some serious issues. There is such a thing, included in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, as a universal right to benefit from the scientific advancement. In your opinion, how does the essence of your project relate to these provisions? Right now, in science, there is a system where publishers are restricting public access to scientific literature to extract greater profits. This is a situation where the magic hand of the market has worked in a wrong way, for some reason. Why wrong? Of course, publishing houses exist due to the fact that the state supports an artificial monopoly on the distribution of scientific articles and information, or, in other words, copyright. 
The end result is that scientific literature becomes unavailable to the scientists who need it for their research, and the public, in turn, cannot access it. The system of scientific communication has broken down for both communication within academia and communication with the general public. So, in fact, we're talking about not just one problem, that people cannot fulfill their right to benefit from the achievements of science, but also about scientific communication being disrupted. Yes, yes, yes. In fact, we can see right now that access for the tax-paying public is completely closed. That is, a person has to be a member of a scientific organization or a university in order to potentially have access to scientific papers. This is, of course, a violation of human rights. Yes, the right to benefit from the scientific advancement is indeed being violated, and there is also a violation of the right to accelerate progress. Because we are talking about limiting the activities of scientists, graduate students, or, for example, representatives of civil science, and then logically, if they do not have the opportunity to use scientific information, then the progress they can achieve is significantly slowed down or even halted. As a result of this, several groups of people can suffer, and ultimately society as a whole suffers, because we all depend on the speed of scientific progress. This is rather a complicated situation. In fact, it's actually rather simple. If you look at the United Nations articles on this topic, there are two points. First, the authors have the right to profit from their work. And the second is that any person has the right to participate in scientific progress. If you consider current situation with the scientific articles, both provisions are being violated. The researchers, as authors, do not get a penny from their work after the publishers sell access to their scientific articles, and the public is denied access as well. Here, the situation is very simple, unlike in other fields affected by copyright, where things are more complicated indeed. In these other fields, public access is limited, but publishers or producers still give something to the creators for their work. I see. How do you think we can promote the creation of new standards in terms of access to scientific knowledge? How can it be promoted? Well, I believe that any activity in this direction is very important. For instance, do we need initiatives on the part of the scientific community to promote open access publications? Or do we need more initiatives from patient organizations, which are suffering from the slowdown in scientific progress? Perhaps. We also need some advocacy on the part of the people dealing with legislation and the regulation of scientific activities at the global level. Which direction do you think leads to the simplest solution? The simplest solution lies in the direction of legislation, that is, some kind of limitation of the law on copyright so that it doesn't affect scientific or educational types of content. The bottom line is that it should be impossible to pursue sites on the Internet as well as their creators and their users for the dissemination of scientific content. This is the simplest solution. How simple uh, will that actually be? How easy it is to change legislation? I don't know. Speaking specifically about advocacy, it has been discussed actively for a long time. Whilst some progress is being made in this direction, it's just, well, you know, this issue will not solve itself. It seems we really need to do everything at the same time. Yes, some kind of activity is needed to bring about change. The exchange of scientific knowledge plays a very important role in progress for any field, even though projects like yours can actually cause a lot of controversy in the legal sense, but if these projects didn't exist, then unequivocally people would suffer much more. For example, for our community, which is addressing aging and age-related diseases, this means people suffering from serious health problems may not benefit from new medicines in time because the creation of these medicines is being hindered at every stage by the need to pay for knowledge.
Therefore, I want to thank you for your contribution for pushing for a dialogue on this complicated matter, and I hope we will see more publications in the open access in future. Okay, very cool.